Serving with passion. Hello and a warm welcome to this edition of Hanamra Kachenu where we focus on tax, customs and excise matters. My name is Elise Dentlingen and I will be your host for the next half an hour or so. In recent developments, the trade verification system is set for implementation. Namra take its services to the Vintuk Agricultural Show. Stakeholder engagements continue in the Zambezi region. Stay tuned for all that and more. The Namibia Revenue Agency, NAMRA, joined forces with the Bank of Namibia to host a series of enlightening workshops aiming to empower importers, exporters, clearing agents and freight forwarders in various parts of the country on the trade verification system. In the heart of Vintuk, the Vintuk Industrial and Agricultural Show is a beacon of attraction drawing exhibitors from every corner and beyond. At the recent show, held from the 22nd to the 30th of September 2023, Namra once again seized the opportunity and extended its array of services to both the exhibitors and the eager spectators. Here are the highlights. with regards to some descriptions we had and I have no no complaints regarding the services really fast really diligent and they go out of the way to help you really the number are doing their stuff Thank you. the services are fine it's very fast here the only thing maybe you need to improve is when I submit already the return when I came here I must submit it again well, I would say uh, it was a little bit convenient for me because seeing that I work uh, 8 to 5, sometimes it's a bit difficult to come to your offices. Now that I can just walk in here and I was assisted and uh, thankfully there was no queue. So that was a good thing and uh, the guys knew what they were doing. Um, I think I was assisted. So if I have to rate you, out of how much? 10? <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a 9. Yeah, you must work for the 10. Namra is deliberate about engaging stakeholders on its mandate. Tax, customs and excise related matters. This time around, Commissioner Sam Shivuta and management engage clients in the Zambezi region. Let's take a look. So what we collect is for the state, but we are also having a responsibility to facilitate trade. And that's why we are at all the borders, we are at all the, all, all the airports, we are at all the entry points to make sure that every good that has been 
imported in Namibia were exported, is registered and cleared by customs. You can just imagine, a lot, nothing must come here or go out without being registered in our Ascuda system. And where the customs duty have to be paid, it has to be paid. But it's not, it has to be paid according to the duties that has been prescribed by the law. If it's true, the goods, the penalty issued is one million. One third of one million will be in your pocket. But what should you do? These are the procedures. It must be specific. The information should be very much accurate. It does not mean that you'll get a one third. There is a committee that has been established under NAMRA that would be <coughs> that would be looking at each report as it comes. The leadership that of unity uniting the people, the establishment of the Chiefs Forum and many other great things that you have done. As Namibian, let's hold head and move it to the same direction. Namara Commissioner Sam Shivute invited the Chinese business community to seek information about the laws administered by Namara to enhance compliance. He said this during an engagement hosted by the First National Bank in Windhoek. Let's see how it went. you have made out of your business, you have your expenses, expenditure and so on. But just that fair share, just declare that fair share, not everything, so that the country can continue protecting you. But we also want to create and improve taxpayers' knowledge about tax law. This is not going to happen tonight. But we want to encourage that, I think going forward, we are ready to engage and our Chief of Strategic Communication, Masandoro Kada, is here with the team as well, where you can have the business community, uh, like let's say the Chinese business community, uh, NCCI or Naroba, or whoever, we are ready to engage and give you more information because we can only hold hand and move in the same direction if we understand one another and we are sharing the information. We are doing this because we also want to improve public confidence in tax administration. And we don't want a situation where you look at NAMRA as an enemy or an institution to fear. Remember, you must not even fear NAMRA. And when we are saying you must not even fear NAMRA, just do the right thing. We are so nice so that we even say, don't even buy us lunch. We must just give you service. And all our service that we give, When we return, we will be joined by Mrs. Phila Willima, supervisor at Namara Dedicated Service Center. We administer tax and custom laws so efficiently and consistently. We are ethical, effective in changing lives. We are there for you. This is your revenue. Namra. Namra. Serving with passion to positively impact the livelihood of every Namibian. Welcome back. We are joined by Mrs. Phila Mulima, who is supervisor at Namra Dedicated Service Centre. Ms. Phila, very welcome to Namra Kachenu. We are very honoured to have you here today. Thank you for having me. Can you tell us, uh, reflecting on the year you have been at Namra now for one year, mm. uh, could you share your overall experience and can you also tell us any significant milestones or learnings that you have had during this time? It has been quite a very humbling journey filled with lots of learning. Mm -hmm. um, Yes, we did experience challenges as well along the way. Yeah. So um, Namra Dead Care Service Center being its first, yeah. so uh, the team and myself mm -hmm. had to adapt to operating in this new environment. Yeah. And then um, the team also had to adapt to being closely monitored in terms of productivity. So mm -hmm. uh, um, the systems that we have in place are able to monitor their daily production along the day. 
And um, myself uh, specifically, I've had to learn to um, encourage productivity yeah. without mm -hmm. being um, uh, coming off as authoritative yes, yes. in that mm -hmm. case. So um, the most significant milestone that I I can say um, I've gained is that I've gained more confidence in myself yeah. as a leader, mm -hmm. and I've learned to delegate more effectively. Wow. Now that is really, truly a mouthful set. Thank and you. I can hear that obviously you have taken it by heart mm. in doing this leadership role at the dedicated center. So can you tell us, um, Ms. Villa, as the leader of a critical service point at NAMRA, could you describe your typical daily routine and the strategies you comply to maintain your team's productivity and how you motivate them? My main responsibility mm. as a uh, NAMRA dedicated service center supervisor is to uh, ensure or maintain a conducive environment for both uh, our clients and the staff members. Yeah. It is very important that uh, uh, staff have a conducive environment, they have the resources they need in order to uh, uh, provide these services because yeah. we expect them to provide efficient and quality service to the clients. So in that sense, I avail myself. Mm -hmm. I avail myself to provide guidance, mm -hmm. to provide resolutions to uh, client inquiries. And um, yeah, that is typically my, my day. So resolutions of everyday challenges. Yeah, and I can hear from what you are saying, availing yourself also as a leader, not just uh, saying, um, I'm do this, do that, but getting uh, yourself involved as yes. a leader as well. Yes, I do need to get myself involved because what is expected of them, I need to also be able to yes. do for me in order to understand what their needs are. So uh, basically, with clients ensuring that um, they receive that service they, they, they require, I also need to ensure that our consultants are available to, uh, 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 to have these processes or services provided yeah. efficiently. That's now the qualities of a very great team leader as well as a great leader. And I'm very honored have been in her presence mm -hmm. and seeing that she's doing so well. So tell us, in your current role, what specific challenges have you encountered so far and how have you uh, addressing or mitigating uh, through them? Uh, as I mentioned, we've, we've had quite uh, challenges experience um, during our first yeah. year. Yeah. So um, most significant ones, I would say, is absenteeism, mm -hmm. um, accurate recording of the services we provide to yeah. our clients in order to determine what mm. services are more in need or mostly in high demand. Yes. Um, we've also experienced um, staff moving on to uh, uh, other employment and um, also the increase in traffic due to the demand of the services that are offered at the center. So um, with these challenges, we've looked at um, putting in policies that will then encourage staff to put in yeah. earlier notices yeah. to allow for planning in terms of availability. Yeah. So we ensure that we have enough uh, consultants in office so that our services are not delayed yeah. uh, uh, when we are offering them to the clients. Yeah. We've also looked at um, requiring additional sources mm -hmm. due to increased traffic or due to staff that yeah. have now left the center. Mm. Um, so additional resources we source from our, within the divisions that we, we, we have uh, temporarily just to relieve the pressures that yeah. uh, 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 the consultants uh, may experience, experience because it can yes, be yeah. quite stressful. Full yes, yeah. Yes. So uh, if you are sitting there and there's yeah. a long queue outside, you can yes. see that all these people are waiting for you, yeah. for you to assist them. So yes, we do uh, uh, try and give them that um, relief when that happens. Mm. Uh, in terms of um, high traffic as well, uh, and also um, the recording of, of data, yes. um, we've then had to implement 
uh, uh, um, new uh, or pro make improvements to the system to allow us to correctly yes. now identify on um, what services the client is, is, is here for because yes. sometimes a client will come in uh, a request for one particular service yes but they end up being assisted for multiple services yes yeah and then that was firstly not uh, yeah. uh, recorded uh, 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 earlier on set oh, yeah yes well, you guys are truly doing a good job. I mean, it really takes one to see a person com coming for one thing and then it goes through um, maybe multiple, like you said, mm. things that you have to do at the end of the day. But so far, I know that they've been doing quite a good job at that and uh, we applaud you for that. You are Thank quite you so doing very well. Ms. Fela, could you elaborate on the methods or practices you employ to ensure efficient client assistance at the center? Mm. Operating in an environment um, such as ours and the, looking at the services that uh, we provide or NAMRA offers to, to, to clients out there, it's very important to uh, have effective uh, communication. Yeah. So um, I do encourage that and also information sharing, yeah. which then um, to ensure that we have consistency yeah. in, in, in our services, especially among our consultants. We don't want to have um, consultants um, speaking the different languages yeah. when they are assisting yeah. our clients. So that is something I strongly uh, 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 really um, say point out to, to the seniors. Yes. So what we do is if one uh, uh, consultant encounters a certain a case for which they require assistance, yeah. then um, a resolution is provided yeah. obviously either by myself or one of the seniors. But then we also maintain that it needs to be shared yes. with the rest of the team so that they are in the know. Yeah. Uh, with that, we believe we are equipping them to be able to assist uh, clients yes. with uh, diverse inquiries. Yeah. Yeah. And um, with that, we also uh, uh, um, ensure that uh, along the way, we are educating them on the services that are provided yeah. within uh, a NAMRA division so that if a case arises or a client comes in and is just needing direction, they are able to channel or direct this client to the right offices. Yes. Yes. And that is also very important that mm. we correct uh, listen, text, pay it where they should get help and not just sending them around. That is a very mm. good initiative. So tell us, uh, uh, tell us uh, what initiatives have you implemented to improve service process uh, at our center? So when we started um, with the center, uh, we, we, we got on, we were the first on this new system that we are using, a queuing management system. Mm -hmm. So we, we learned it. And then um, daily, we then um, also just assess as we are working on it and assisting clients yeah. assess the challenges or areas to which it would then uh, need improvement. Improvement, yes. And um, one of the things identified that we had one single queue for all clients coming mm -hmm. in, regardless of what services they, they, they needed. They, they needed. Mm. So um, we went on also one of the areas that we needed to, to, mm. to, to work on was that there was no um, priority tickets yeah. for our elderly persons, yeah. um, pregnant persons, or the mm. physically challenged persons mm. as well. So with that said, we um, had requested for these changes to be made. So we've mm. implemented the, uh, the category for priority clients. And then we've separated our cues yeah. on how they are displayed now on the system. On the in, system. So if a client comes in um, mm. and they are in need of a support service, yeah. yeah, so they will see their ticket under the support service yeah. queue on our screens. Mm. If it's for client services, uh, same applies, or if it's for customs and excise, that will then also yeah. uh, be displayed as such on our queuing management system. system and yeah. um, one of uh, the third one that we've uh, implemented is we've simplified our yeah. menu options on the queuing machine mm. to make it easier for our clients, clients to identify yeah. 
the type of services that they are here to request. Yes, to request, yeah. Mm. I'm so proud of you and your team for considering the pregnant, the elderly. Mm. That, that is for me in, uh, in itself a very awesome thing mm. because that is very important that we look after our tech space according to their needs. So can you tell us, uh, Ms. Fella, you are doing such a great job mm. that me, I, <laughs> I think I should join your team. <laughs> but uh, how do you ensure education of clients uh, at the center? Most of our services that are offered at the Dead Care Center are through portal. Yeah. yeah. So with that said, um, you see that when you visit the Garrett Center, um, also all basically mostly to say domestic taxes yeah. consultants have second screens. Yeah. So that is because when a client come in, mm -hmm. we assist them through their own portal. Yes. So if they are there to request to say they want to file a return online. Yeah we guide them so they need to go into their own portal yes. and they see what the consultant is doing, doing yeah. so with that we're ensuring that this client is mm. is, 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 is now uh, uh, enabled to be able to go back home and, yes. and do this on their own, on their own yeah. um, besides that we do have flyers that are displayed mm -hmm. uh, on our flyer stand at the center uh, um, regarding the type of services that yeah. NAMRA offers uh, from mm -hmm. different divisions and we also have a, a bonus self-service desk mm -hmm. for clients that are in need of a space to, yeah. to, to do their taxes or to uh, access uh, our, our services. Yeah. yeah, yes, that is a very good to hear. So uh, can you tell us uh, what are the future plans? What steps are you planning uh, to better dedicated service center for the future? Well, service delivery is mm -hmm. a continuous process. Mm -hmm. So we can't say that we've reached a point where there is no room yeah. for improvement. And we've only been uh, a year now since we started operations. Yeah. So uh, we will continue uh, uh, providing the current services that we do and continuously assess areas in need. Um, it can be also that uh, public can come and, and suggest yeah. improvement. Mm -hmm. um, I have received uh, uh, suggestions through my mm -hmm. office, uh, uh, mm -hmm. very good ones which we've taken into consideration. consideration yes. yes, so uh, I do welcome the public to, to give us suggestions in that. Yeah, because that is good, um, because sometimes I believe uh, if the public have an idea, it's mm -hmm. best sharing it with you and then you can take it from there. Yes. Uh, so I want to ask you uh, your last question for the day. You have done so great today in giving us such valuable information. What message or key takeaway would you like to convey um, to the client who utilizes the service provided at a NAMRA dedicated service center? I would like to thank our clients for being patient with us through this journey. I know we've had challenges and we are experiencing uh, long queues and they've had to wait yeah. in the queues for so long. Um, but that is uh, uh, something that we've identified as a challenge and uh, needs to be addressed. We are something that we've already been working on. And um, so I, I really, really appreciate their patience. And for those that have not yet visited the dedicated service center, mm -hmm. we are situated uh, opposite the Robert M. Gave Clinic, or yeah. rather say St. George's. Mm -hmm. We are open from eight to five, and mm -hmm. we are also open between our lunch hours. Thank you so much, Ms. Filler. Is there anything else that you would like to add to our viewers out there? Um, thank you to Namraka Chenu for giving me this platform so that I'm able to uh, give this message out to yeah. the public and our clients. Thank you so much for coming in today. That was very informative and thank you for taking out the time. We know you are very busy to come and speak to us about mm -hmm. your services. Thank you. And that was Mrs. Fila Mwilima, Supervisor at Namara Dedicated Service Center. See you after the break. We
discussions to positively impact the livelihood of every Namibian. Frida Haikonda is a senior tax audit officer at the large taxpayer unit, one of NAMRA's dedicated staff with over 22 years of experience in domestic taxes. Here is Frida Haikonda. My name is Frida Haikonda, a senior tax office debt collection and management under large taxpayers unit. Mm -hmm. At Namra, at Namibia Revenue Agents in October 2022. I started my career in 2000 as a data typist at the Ministry of Finance and in the Revenue Department. I was promoted to several position unit to the Chief Taxation Office at the Large Taxpayers Unit in 2014. What motivated me? In that, I'm a tax collector, collecting revenue on behalf of the state to positively impact the living world of the Namibians, including myself and my family. What I'm currently doing on NAMRA, NAMRA is mandated to collect revenue, tax, and duty on behalf of the state. My duties and my responsible is to ensure that our clients or our taxpayer pay the collect tax due to the state. Where our clients are not paying tax, I notify them by calling them, uh, sending the email, and also issue the demand letters. I also encourage them to visit our office to make payment arrangement in case they cannot settle the debts on time. My future plan for NAMRA, as I mentioned that I'm a debt collector, is to ensure that all the outstanding debt is paid in full. And uh, I also want to finish my MBA. My last message to my viewer, it's very important to pay tax. By paying tax, you are contributing the development to your countries. My message to my viewer, Namibia let us comply and pay tax on time to avoid a lot of things so that our future generation will have a better education, free education, education, and also to increase the welfare of all Namibians, and also to improve mm -hmm. our living standard. Thank you. Now let's focus on VAT exemption for diplomats, consular missions, public international organization and technical assistance agreement. Hi everyone, my name is Salma Ivula, a senior tax office, refund verification, central regional operation domestic tax. Today we are going to talk about VAT exemption for diplomat, consular mission, public international organization and technical assistance agreement. First of all, let me take you through the overview of VAT exemption for diplomat, consular mission, public international organization, and technical assistance agreement. The VAT Act number 10 of 2000 under section 40 as amended makes a provision for the diplomat, consular mission, public international organization, and technical assistance agreement to be exempted from paying VAT on certain goods and services on condition and restriction that may be prescribed. Upon paying the VAT on goods and services, the above mentioned taxpayer are entitled to claim their VAT refunds. These types of refund is part of the main function in the refund verification office and claims are only processed through the central regional operation domestic tax. Now, who is eligible to register for value-added tax exemption under Section 40? 
We have four categories, namely the diplomats, the consular mission, public international organization, and technical assistance agreement or organization under technical assistance agreement. Okay, under the first three categories, the diplomats, consular mission, public international organization should register with the NAMRA office for VAT exemption provided they are issued with a diplomatic VAT authorization certificate from the Ministry of International Relation and Cooperation that enable the claiming of refunds of tax paid. The technical assistance agreement should register with NAMRA provided the first seek approval for, of VAT exemption through the NAMRA Commission's office. This approval should be accompanied by a VAT authorization certificate that enables the claiming of refund of tax paid based on condition the commissioner may prescribe. Now let's talk about the required documents to submit for value-added tax claims. After registration, you can then submit your VAT claims to the Refund Verification Office and the following documents should accompany your VAT claims. Firstly, if a VAT claim form should be completed and be an official stamp of the respective office. A VAT authorization certificate to be attached a detailed VAT summary of input tax paid, and lastly, the tax invoices. In the case of diplomats, are required to submit original tax invoices, while consular mission, public international organization, and technical assistance agreement should submit copies. However, they should retain original tax invoices for a period of one year. Moreover, NAMRA also makes a provision for electronic filing through the ITAS portal for fast and easy verification. In conclusion, Section 40 of VAT Act outlines that diplomats, consular missions, public international organizations, and technical assistance agreements are eligible for VAT exemption and should submit all the required documentation for verification purposes. Finally, the process of verification of these VAT claims takes about two to four weeks to be finalized. That is all from my side. I thank you. In the next insert, we will look at the requirements for deregistration of individuals, trusts and companies. Today, I'm Amalia Aleta Kisti. I'm working at New Business. It's a assistant tax officer for different registrations. Step 1. Client work in for manual and online deity registration request for individual employees tax, VAT and import, withholding, royalties and non-residence shareholder tax. Client submit a request later or a declaration and state the reason for the registration. Staff members check that the returns are up to date and ensure that the client is not having debit or credit balance on the account. Staff members received captured scanned documents and complete the request. Step two, staff members accept, reject or send back the request. The system forward the request to the case manager, receives and allocate to the case officer. Case officer will receive and handle the case. Note, handle means system will guide the staff member through the pre-programmed steps. Case officer submit the case to registration supervisor for approval or rejection. Step three. A registration officer completes the deregistration and suspension and the system issued notification to the client. Clients below 60 years must be suspended and clients above 60 must be deregistered. Here is the trivia of duties. D 
Did you know? Between April 2021 and March 2023, Namara generated an impressive net revenue of 110.7 billion for the state. These funds play a crucial role in supporting various government initiatives, including the construction of schools and roads, the payment of government employee salaries, and the continuation of vital government projects. Serving with passion. Next, we are looking at registration and licensing for the Customs and Excise Transit Bond. Hello, my name is Johannes Shikwaya, Senior Customs and Excise Officer, Division Trade Facilitation and Customs Procedure, Section Registration and Licensing. I'm going to talk about Transit Bond. What is a Transit Bond? It means a Customs Procedure used for goods that are in transit on which duties or taxes have not been paid. For example, if goods are in transit from the port of Walvesby to Zambia, at the point of entry that is at Walvesby, a security bond is launched or provisional payment is paid to cover applicable duties or taxes on such goods. At the point of exit that is at the border to Zambia, the security bond is credited or provisional payment is refunded. Requirements of the documents to be submitted. Firstly, request letter stating purpose and amount of guarantee the applicant wish to, se to secure for the transit facility. Original bank or insurance surety bond original and valid certificate of good standing issued by the Namibia Revenue Agency, certified copies of identity or passport document for applicants, proof of registration with Business Intellectual Property Authority. That's optional. Now we are going to look at application processes. Firstly, an applicant shall submit the letter of request and original surety bond to the Department of Customs and Excise. 
The Department of Customs and Excise will accept and verify the application request. In conclusion, upon approval, the bond will be uploaded into the ASCODA old system and the applicant will be issued with the principal number and bond number. Thank you. Do you want to make a payment for tax debt? Here are the available options for payment. My name is Angela Kamu, Senior Revenue Treasury Officer at NAMWA. I'm going to take you through the process of making payments to our NAMWA offices. We have four modes of payments which are acceptable at our offices, which are direct deposits, cash payments, electronic fund transfers, and speed points machines. When making electronic fund transfers, we have two accounts available for our taxpayers, which is a receiver of revenue, account 165001, and uh, the VAT dedicated account 165060. When making a direct deposit, our taxpayers need to fill this deposit slip at their commercial bank. You need to have your TIN with you. The TIN consists of eight, eight characters, and then you should also know the period that you are making the payment for. When making an electronic fund transfer, for your penalty or interest liability due to NAMRA, you use the EFT referencing example as shown on the screen. It also has 19 characters, but on the tax type and tax period, you put 99999, indicating that the payment is account payment. When making electronic fund transfers, EFT referencing example is shown on the screen, which comprises of 19 characters. The taxpayer reference number comprises of five parameters, which are as follows. One, represent the payment method, in this case, EFT payment. O6, office of registration or your return office. The eight character represents your tax identification number. One, four, is tax type, in this case, employee's tax. 2018-06 is the tax period for which the payment is meant for. The last time we asked what the factors are that triggers the rejection of manual refunds. The answer is refunds rejected by the system due to outstanding returns, refunds rejected due to no bank account on the ITA system, refunds rejected due to unpaid liabilities, and refunds paid in closed or inactive bank accounts. Here is the question for this episode. Name three requirements for deregistration of companies. Kindly email your answer to namrakacheno at namra.org.na. The due date for submission is the 19th of October 2023. The winner will be announced in the next episode. And that brings us to the end of this edition of Namrakacheno. We hope you found the information valuable and insightful. Join us in two weeks' time for more updates. Until then, stay informed and compliant. Goodbye. Giving fairness and equality to our nation. We appreciate the difference in ethnicity.